And so this uh, marriage ceremony gives us the opportunity to think about, you know, God bringing lives together and what does God want for lives that He brings together and what do you want for your lives that you're bringing together. And, uh, you know, some things are so steady and so true that you just can't improve on them. And I remember when I married that lovely woman in the back back there, my goal at that time was that we be good to each other. Five words. Be good to each other. And that's what I want to talk to y'all about. Because you know, if you'll spend the rest of your life just trying to be good to each other, then you'll have a happy, wonderful life. And so that's what I want to spend just a few minutes talking to you about. And let's talk about those words so that every time you remember to say it to each other, when you have a little frustration or a little something, you need to remember, we said we'd be good to each other. Think about these words. The first one is to be. Be, in this sense, be is usually kind of a, a passive verb, but in this phrase, be good to each other, it's an action verb. Very much an action verb. And it's a state of being. You know, a, a lot of people talk about salvation for Christians and and they talk about it like it was a one-time experience. And I say, no, no, it's a be being saved. It's a, an ongoing relationship that God wants with you. And certainly if we're going to make a marriage work, we have to have that kind of attitude that it's an ongoing relationship and growth and maintenance of a relationship that we're all about. we got to be married and be being married. I mean, there's sometimes that that woman demonstrates grace back there by not throwing tomatoes at me. And that, that's a miracle. And some days that's a pretty big miracle. But you go into this marriage thing with the idea in mind of being good to each other. It's a state of being. <laughs> you know, I know you work hard and I know you do. Sometime when I was coming home from work and I had to see the family, I had to change gears. You know, and I had to get out of the work frame of mind and into the home frame of mind. And I'd go home, home. And if I wasn't careful, when I walked in the door, I'd still snap or blow a fuse. I can remember my little girl, she'd have to remind me, plug into Jesus, Daddy, like you plug in to a light switch. She'd, she'd remind me to plug in to the Lord. And sometimes you have to do that in marriage. You know, plug into being good to each other. Plug in <clears throat> to thinking about your mate. Plug in to thinking about each other. Yeah, like that. <laughs> That's beautiful. And be good to each other needs to be the very state of your relationship. Every day. What are we going to do today? I don't know, but we're going to be good to each other. You know, and if you'll approach your marriage with that kind of attitude, it'll work out. Even when you got bad things, to face, and you will. It rains on the just and the unjust, and you're going to face it all together. That's what you're doing today. You not only have to, you're not facing it alone anymore. You're facing it with somebody. That's exciting. B, Ephesians two ten. We are His workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works. God means for your marriage to be a good thing. That's what God wants. Be good. Good. The very nature of God. Simple. Solid. Sure. Settled. Spiritual. Clean. Right. Pure. Positive. Romans 12, 2, the last part of it says, Be renewed in your mind that you may understand the will of God, which is the good, acceptable, and perfect thing to do. Sometimes I need that reminder. Boy, I'm just... Mm, I'm sure that... Whatever she needs, it's a piece of my mind. But it ain't the piece of my mind that I'm thinking about that moment. We've got to let God make our mind new so we can say His thoughts to each other. And that's, that's what I know both of you intend to do. And that's a wonderful thing. Be good. Two, that's reciprocal responsibility. You do it to Him. He does it to you. 
It's a mutual decision. You've decided to be good to him, and he's decided to be good to you. You know, and it's a playing field. It's like, well, we're going to go out and play football. Well, we're going to play the marriage game today. And the decided field of the marriage game today is we're going to be good to each other. Ephesians 5. Wives, honor your husband. Husbands, love your wives. It's one of those things. you got to be too busy doing what God's telling you to do to try to tell your mate what they're supposed to do. Ouch, my toes hurt. <clears throat> be good to each. You know, we got to look at our own need. we got to look, how can I make this marriage better? How can I have a healthy attitude towards this marriage? Personal decision. Well, I need him. But no, I need me. You know, and that's where you got to start your heart in your marriage. Looking at your own attitude. Individual accountability. You know, Casey, you got to be saying, what do I need to do to make my marriage better? Jenny, you got to be saying, what do I need to do to make my marriage better? Romans 14, 12. So then each of us will give an account of ourselves to God and our marriage. Hebrews 10, 24. And let us think about how to motivate each other to love and good works. Well, I've been praying about this myself. That sweet woman back there, I need to do a better job of being a better man. And every day I do, you know. And so part of this is individual accountability. Start today, but don't quit. Keep up every day deciding what you can do to make your marriage better. And the last point, other. Be good to each other. She's your affection. Your only one. He's your affection. Your only one. You've pledged entirely your life to each other. Completely, entirely, totally, 100%. That's your other. He's your other. That's what you got to be all about to make a marriage work. Committed faithfulness to one person and one only. Eyes for no other, heart for no other. Committed one to each other. Love is given away to this person. You got your heart so given to each other, there's no room for nobody else except in the love of Jesus. This 1 Thessalonians 5.11 says, Encourage one another. Build each other up. Before your mate gets home from work, what can I do to make them a little happier about their life? Ephesians 5.21, Submitting to one another in reverence to Christ. You know, put your mate first. Boy, that's easy to say and hard to do. I, when I got married, I literally had little signs that I put around the house. Be good to each other. But more importantly, if I, this message accomplishes anything, and you remember to put little signs in your heart to be good to each other, then I'll be happy and joyous with you.